How am I feeling? Um, I'd say excited, anxious, nervous. I, w I wouldn't be able to specify one particular emotion. Um, but yeah, an amalgamation of all of them. You know, it's, uh, I'm definitely very excited to, to finally get back in there and get my career moving forwards again. Uh, but of course, comes a, along with that is the anxiety and the anxiousness to uh, get in there and perform how I know I can. Unfortunately, last year um, I was inactive. Uh, it was from no fault of my own. Uh, I had a, a plethora of opponents pull out um, literally within a few weeks of the event, had an event even cancel, and then had God knows how many opponents just refuse to, to straight out fight me. I can't, I can't lie, it was very demotivating. Uh, a number of times throughout the year, I even contemplated retiring and just focusing on my coaching, as look is a big part of, of fighting. You know, you can do all the training in the world, uh, but if, if look isn't on your side, your career's never gonna move forward. So yeah, it was a very unmotivating time. I will always train, I, I love training. I love coaching, so I'm always involved with the sport. I was never out of shape as such, or I was never out of touch with the sport. You know, I'm always heavily invested within it. So I didn't feel like I, I lost a step, and I always continued to progress throughout the year. But um, motivation to fight definitely did start to um, start to, to, to wane a little bit. Um, obviously, fortunately, I've got answered the call, and I, I'm blessed to finally be, you know, fighting on such a, a, a highly regarded show in Europe. The combination is going to be simple in terms of a fake jab, low kick. You're going to return back with a three-two and a switch kick. That there, easy combination against those fake jab, low. But Straight back into position to shoot into the 3 2 and switch. You'll go with a 1 2 first, you go with a jab second, and then you go with a combination third. So we've got those three phases. We've got our setup, guys. Again, we go 1 2. So Lions Gym, it's a massive family, you know, we've all got each other's backs, you know, it's simple, if somebody, you know, was to, to message in our group, like, oh, I don't know, I, I need a, a plumber tomorrow, you know, somebody in Lions Gym will, will be there to help them out, you know, um, so we're a massive family, everyone's got each other's backs, and uh, that goes a long way, there's a lot of loyalty within our gym, uh, a lot of camaraderie, so, um, that being said, not only does that transpire to the fighters, 
obviously, you know, having each other's backs within training camps, within fight preparations, but also, you know, on a community level, uh, we've, we, we, we're blessed, um, you know, to have such a supportive community around us as to where we can help each other, um, you know, uh, like when we're talking about, you know, the area we're within, we've got quite a lot of um, youngsters that maybe are, are unfortunate in terms of, you know, where they are in their in society. And um, yeah, we come together, we help them out as a family, and uh, I do believe it, it pays dividends. Good work, guys. Great stuff. You want to say anything? No. Great work, guys. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So, Braulio, he, he's incredible. It's uh, Words don't do his level of jiu-jitsu justice. Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer for a reason. But until you roll with Braulio, you don't truly understand the level he's, uh, he's on. Yeah. I've, I've said it to people before. He will whoop me more than I would whoop a beginner off the street, which is incredible because, you know, I've, I'm no slouch when it comes to jiu-jitsu. I've trained for a long, long time. And the way Braulio can handle me without even training and being in shape himself is just ridiculous. I, I've never experienced anything like it. His understanding conceptually of jiu-jitsu is, is, is something beyond the, the realm of being able to, to explain. He's... Um, so yeah, being able to learn from such a mind, being able to um, have such a mind around me and being blessed with that is, um, is definitely, definitely paid off of my own grappling, understanding and knowledge. chin down and you lose a little bit on the faith because you don't want to use that. Then I'll go here, push away. So it's less, if I'm here, he can kind of come back and want to fuck off. He has to turn, he has to turn. Yeah, because he's already halfway. Yeah, I can, effectively. I could, but it's 
not the same as light that we use. Right? But his arm is only here because I cannot point him. So Raju Mee, he's like a, he's like a big brother. Um, he's got the best intention for me, always. Even if it might, might may not seem like it at the time. I remember when I was younger, you know, he pressed me to, to stay in school and to go to college and get qualified. And I, I didn't want to do this. I just wanted to train. I just wanted to fight. But um, almost like a big brother or a parent would, he forced me to, um, you know, to get educated. Uh, so. Like I said, at the time it didn't seem like it was a good thing, but bigger picture, he's always got the best for me in mind. Um, so yeah, yeah, the relationship is just, it's developed. I've been here since I was about 14, 15, and I've known Raj ever since. So it just organically developed into him being like a big brother to me. And um, yeah, he's been a critical part of not only my progression within the sport, but my progression within my career as well, obviously being a coach here at Lions Gym, but also as a person. I've learned a lot from him just on a, on a personal level. He's um, a great husband, a great father, and a great role model for myself and many people in the gym. Everyone oh, tried class, to yeah, make me say bad fan stuff. Fantastic class. Yeah, Everyone agree, tried to make me say bad stuff. I was very close. I controlled myself. I was very nice. Darren weren't that bad today. <laughs> You know we're not on that guy, are Brandon, I mean, we've been working together, I believe it was just post-COVID, so we're talking maybe 2021, 2022. Um, he was just a, an amateur boxer in Coventry, and I believe it was COVID just inspired him to just hold some pads. Um, I seen some videos, I had a couple of friends hit pads with him, and I immediately seen the talent he possessed when it comes to holding pads and coaching. So yeah, I just uh, I dropped him a message and we got training and um, we hot, hit it off instantly, you know, like I see him as a, as, as a brother to me now. Um, he's, he's a fantastic asset to be had um, in my corner and in my coaching regime. 
Um, like I, I will train with him, you know, three times a week without fail, and and it's um, part of my week. I, I, I really enjoy, and I feel like he's developed my boxing and the shape of my boxing and the fundamentals of my boxing incredibly. stop somebody I do truly believe it's God given um, some people might try and argue the toss they might be able to do you know strength conditioning to build up power and whatnot but I think you can slam as many bed balls as you like you are never going to truly develop knockout power I, I believe it's God given and fortunately that is one of the the physicalities I was blessed with I can hit somebody and I can fold them in half obviously that being said you know technique timing all this type of stuff will play a factor into it but it, it's God-given, there's no toys about it. You've either got knockout power or you haven't. There's something raw, something animalistic, something almost barbaric about knocking somebody out. It's so exhilarating. Again, words can't explain the rush and the feeling it gives you to, to knock another human out. So I definitely prefer knocking somebody out. And you see this over time, to be fair. You see a lot of submission artists maybe, you know, get a knockout, get a taste for it and almost end up neglecting their, their jiu-jitsu or their wrestling because they want to chase the finish because the knockout is so addictive. With me and Max, I think it's a, it's a fun stylistic fight. I believe we, we are both MMA fighters. I believe he is uh, more of a boxer anywhere than anything else when it comes to his, his technicality, but he, he can take deep people down and he can grapple fairly well. That being said, his strength relies in his boxing, his staying power, his cardio, and his grit and determination. I'm very confident in my boxing. I like to think I've got a great low kick, and everyone knows the level my grappling's on. So I believe it's stylistically we're gonna butt heads. We both like to come forwards, we both like to throw hands. I, I think the result will massively be dictated as to who can establish the front foot. Whoever can establish the front foot, in my opinion, will most likely take the fight. I know it'll be entertaining, I know it'll be exciting. I've just got to make sure I don't get too hot-headed, too overzealous in there and hunt the finish. Because I know I want to do everyone proud, I know I want to put on a show and I know I want a bonus. So I've just got to go in there as a professional and yeah, yeah, handle business.